Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you, Dr. Gopal, for giving me this opportunity to be here and participate in this uh, instruction course. So, uh, getting on to the topic straight away, we will be talking about intravitreal injection, starting follow up, and free treatment for aging macular degeneration. These are my financial disclosures. So, Whenever we talk of managing uh, AMD, we, the first important thing is an early and correct diagnosis, then prompt treatment, continuing treatment, how the, we'll be seeing various regime, regimens, tackling non-responders, and when to stop treatment. So this is the way uh, these membranes may present. You see that classical gray, dirty gray membrane, uh, or, or an occult CNVM with a hemorrhage, or uh, an exudative uh, uh, reaction which we see sometimes in PCB or RAP. So baseline FFA and OCT in all cases is important. OCT is very useful in monitoring response to uh, the treatment. O OCT angio is very promising but doesn't currently replace uh, fluorescein and ICG as we will see in some cases and there is a role for autofluorescence and ICG. Here, in a situation like this, with this large hemorrhage or an exudative reaction, you would suspect uh, polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. And ICG here, classically showing polyps at the foveal area. Here, in this, again, an exudative reaction, we see a hemorrhage there localized, and we see some abnormality of the blood vessels, and we would suggest, uh, suspect a RAP uh, lesion, a retinal angiometrous proliferation, which we see here in the color photo and this hot spot here and subsequently the ICG also confirms that. So coming on to the treatment protocol, so anti-VEGF monotherapy is as we all know currently the gold standard for most AMD lesions and when to start is very clear, you start as soon as possible. So as soon as the diagnosis is made, I think we should start uh, the treatment. We, by and large, start with the loading dose in most cases, three injections at monthly intervals, repeat FA and OCT after three injections, and then reassess and continue. So the treatment could be PRN, treat and extend, or as we'll see later in some non-responders, uh, different regimes. The follow-up ideally is monthly visual equity and clinical examination, OCT and FFA to be done as required. Treatment as required if we are following the PRN or the treat and extend regime. If the patient can't come that frequently from outstation for some reasons, we must have at least a visual equity in the hometown and communicate that to the treating surgeon. And in the stable patients, the interval may gradually be increased to a maximum of three months. We'll see now some cases and the various types of follow-up and treatment regimes. Here is an extrafoveal CNVM. And this could be treated uh, with laser and anti-VEGF. And if you are lucky to have such a membrane, the patient may be stable virtually uh, for the rest of his life. This was a case, again, uh, occult CNVM, single dose was given of anti-VEGF, followed the PRN, and the patient, uh, we felt in certain features there that he may have a risk of going in for RP atrophy. So we wanted to avoid too many injections, and the patient stayed stable after just an injection. What are the criteria for re-injection after the loading dose? And according to the Prompto study, this was increase in central retinal thickness of more than 100 microns, loss of more than or equal to five letters with any fluid on the OCT, new hemorrhage, new classic CNV, persistent fluid detected by OCT one month after injection or appearance of any fluid on the OCT. So any of these would constitute a criteria to treat. Here we see a case uh, with anti-VEGF monotherapy. Post the loading dose, the fluid has dried up there, the subretinal fluid. Uh, then there is a recurrence. Again, the patient uh, is injected whenever he develops fluid there in the macula, and there is a little drop in the vision, as you see, from 6.6 N5 to 6.9 N8, and he received nine injections over uh, 17 months. Uh, this continued at one point, ICG was done to rule out any focal lesion and that also was negative. The patient had 15 injections over the next almost three years. 
and on monthly the injection since December 2012 fluid persisting even on treatment underwent a reduced fluid PDT with anti-VEGF later the fluid resolved and stayed so for about over a year but, but then again record and this patient is on monthly injections since then so he's received now almost over a, uh, about 80 injections this is his only functioning eye but still maintaining around 6, 9 and 5 vision, is N6 vision and these patients are the ones who really feel encouraged to continue treatment and, and shows that persistence and patience on the part of both the patient and the physician pays. So the Lacuda and PRN treatment is the key to better PRN dosing will be the ability to identify which patients would spontaneously sustain improvement after the initial loading, loading dose and which patients require continued treatment and the ability to predict recurrence before fluid accumulates as there is risk of a permanent loss of vision with repeated recurrences. So the other regime which was tried was the treat and extend regime, the loading dose, the drying of the lesion followed by continued injection, increasing the gap by two weeks to a maximum of 12 weeks. However, if on OCT or visual equity, in between, again, there is uh, fluid accumulation or drop in vision, then the interval may again be reduced and then gradually built up. The vision with this could be maintained with lesser number of visits and less cost burden. And unlike the pronto treatment, the treatment you are doing basically before fluid records. So at that fixed point, even if the patient does not develop fluid or a drop in vision, you would still inject that is at a cap of a maximum of 12 weeks. So this is an anti-VEGF monotherapy for occult CNVM. Again, post the loading dose, we can see a good response here, the OCT. The hemorrhage is cleared up, the OCT is dried. And the patient then was put on a gradually a treat and extend regime and received eight injections over 15 months and is continuing to be stable. Here you can see this is all almost two years later and we are continuing to give three monthly injections to this patient. Uh, a seven-up trial was done for the seven-year outcomes in ranibizumab treated patients originally in the Anchor Marina studies and one-third of patients had good visual outcome and a third had poor visual outcome. Compared with the baseline, 43% had a stable or improved letter score whereas 34% declined by 15 letters or more. So over a period of time, there was a drop in many of these patients, and it was seen that the patients who had relatively lesser number of injections tended to have more drop in visions than the one who had more regular injections. And finally, to non-responders, so these, you need to re-image them. You may switch medicines, increase dose, or increase the frequency, or reduce the gap between the injections, or switch over to alternatives like aflibercept or add photodynamic therapy in some cases. So these are some of the factors that could influence poor or non-response. Aflibercept, uh, we know, is, is one of the newer medicines, the VEGF trap. And with this, uh, we see a patient here who was uh, uh, not responding, uh, in, in fact, worsening on treatment with both uh, uh, Avastin and Ranibizumab. And uh, this patient was ultimately, when ILEA became available, to switch to ILEA and has responded well and dried up and, and maintaining better vision. So this is the course you see. He's dropped to six counting finger, then has improved to 624. Uh, this was, again, a non-responder after multiple uh, anti-VEGF injections. and. Uh, uh, fibrovascular PEDs is one situation in which aflibercept has been found to possibly have an edge in the treatment uh, compared to the other anti-VEGF agents. Here the, this was a case of a polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy which was persisting with anti-VEGF treatment and post-PDT when photodynamic therapy was added, there was a good response and, and drying up of the macula. Finally, when in some situations you may be, because there may be really no point continuing anti-VEGF injections, that is absence of fluid on OCT with no leak on FFA, no improvement or deterioration of vision and or lesion morphology, persistent fluid overlying scar tissue with a stable visual equity or a very atrophic fovea. Thank you for your attention and I invite you to the DOS annual meeting in April 15th to 17th. 
and an announcement for the uh, meeting of the World Congress of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus in conjunction with DOS in December 2017. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.